everybody so for t my project i actually decided to write on a artifact called the sundance whistle um, i found these on idaho's virtual museum this is a database where a bunch of idaho's museums have actually collaborated and taken 3d renderings of their artifacts and then sent them in to this website so the reason I was interested in these is because they have a musical and a ceremonial purpose. And personally, I just think that's super interesting. Um, I think religion, like ancient religions are really cool and I think music is even cooler. So I was really interested in this artifact. So now the Sundance Whistle, again, it's a sacred artifact. Um, they're personalized to their creator and they range in size. Um, they can be the biggest deer bones, they could be elk bones, they could be eagle feathers, whatever you can think of. You can make a bone whistle out of it. Now, I was not able to get it on my first attempt. So this was my original attempt. This is a deer bone that um, we tried to cut the ends off of and then uh, drill a hole into. Now this one's split and now it has molding clay on it in order to try and fix it, but this does not work. So this was my attempt, but again, these can range in size. Um, now they're usually painted. Um, they can have beads, they can have, you know, string, almost anything you could think of to decorate it with, they would usually do. Now, the artifacts from Fort Hall's collection, they're actually broken, so you can only see a little slight part of what was supposed to be the whistle, um, and they're still tied with the original bindings that they were found with, which I thought was super cool. Um, now, these two that were at Fort Hall, um, they were found, or I apologize, they were created with the bones of a crane and an eagle. Um, the bone uh, of these animals is hollow, um, and th they would tie them so that they could put them around their neck and carry them around. So using a stone tool, they would cut the ends off of them, remove any excess marrow from them, and then drill a small hole into them. And I say drill, as in like this would take you 12 hours because they would take a small little rock with a tiny little point on it and just dig into this bone forever. And I watched somebody do it the other day and it was the longest process I've ever seen and I couldn't do it so I tried not to which is probably why mine broke. But um, the instrument themselves, they're really loud. Um, I've never heard anything shriek that loud before and I just thought it was super interesting, so I tried to make it, but it doesn't whistle, which was probably good because it would probably annoy the heck out of anybody that watched this. So, um, so these whistles were found at an unknown site. Um, that is because they were removed from the original locations without being documented, and then they were returned to Fort Hall. Um, and a lot of these whistles, like a lot of the artifacts that were found in that location, were undocumented so we're not sure if they're from the same location or if they're from a different location in comparison to one another but we do know that they were a lot of these whistles were actually created in between the years of 1522 and sometime in the middle to the end of the 1900s um, this was because this was like the prime era of the Sundance so 1522 uh was the creation of the very first, I'm assuming, um, and that would make these about 500 years old. So um, now the Sundance itself was actually a ceremony that was performed by a ton of tribes um, all over Northern America that stretches anywhere from Canada to Texas. Um, and Usually, the the main reason, I apologize, um, the main reason that this was banned and no longer exists is because it involves self-harm. And they can't do that anymore, especially not in public and without getting in trouble. So they do not do it anymore. Um, but it is a very interesting 
ceremony. So um, I actually have an excerpt um, from a Native American writer who wrote on what this entailed. Um, but basically what they say is that the ceremony is an annual one and it is supposed to represent the rebirth of all living things on earth, especially humans, but also animals. The earth itself is being reborn. The planets and all space and all that is supposed to be reborn on this single day. So it's kind of like the beginning of the year. So the bands, the groups, they would all join together in a single campground and they would camp out together. Now they would choose a single warrior usually their best or the one that needs to prove themselves the most, they would have them go cut out a tree, cut down a tree uh, that was not allowed to touch the ground. And they would bring this tree all the way back to the ceremony site where they would decorate it and then plaster it right smack in the center of their campground. Now this was usually a big circle. And then they would attach rawhide straps to it. This is usually the skin of an animal that they had hunted previously, and they would just attach it to the log itself and let the strings hang down. So the next morning after that, they would begin dancing. So the dance usually consisted of only men, and women rarely participated, and I would assume that is because of the self-harm um, part of it and possibly because they were dancing without food and water for days. Um, and I think it varied depending on the group, but it seems to be about three to four days without food or water. Um, but the, this is where <laughs> the Sundance whistle actually comes in, but while they were dancing, they would have these Sundance whistles on their necks. And I guess another purpose of it being an eagle feather is because it was super light and it was easy to keep in your mouth for four days, I'm assuming. But um, yes, yeah, so the animals, um, specifically the eagle and the crane, um, they were super important to the Native Americans. Each of the animals in Native American society represent different characteristics, but the eagle itself actually symbolized the chief of all animals. And that is because it was a powerful, courageous, and super fast uh, animal. And they believed that this animal came to people who were desperate and they were helpful to those who were in need. So the ability to fly for this animal um, was probably one of the reasons that it was super important because they believed this ability to fly gave the eagle the ability to carry messages in between the people and the gods and that connected them with their supernatural forces. Now, the main purpose, if you're talking practically, is because they can vibrate. Um, the bones themselves are easier to whistle through because they vibrate the sound out um, unlike a lot of the actual artifacts that I have here today. But um, as they were whistling through these, they would try to mimic the sound of the dance name, which is, I apologize if I botch this, but we wonky watchy Um And then in order to end the ceremony, they would attach uh, the rawhide from the log into their skin, and then they would try and rip it from their bodies. Um, these were usually attached with bones and it looked really painful and a lot of people ended up traumatized after these. So that was a very interesting cultural ceremony that is banned today and yes it will not likely never be repeated. Um, I don't think self-harm is a very fun um, ceremonial thing but um, yes yeah, so for my project I actually created a bone whistle um, with a deer antler that was found during shed season and the uh, feathers of a woodpecker. I just like these because they're really vibrant and orange and just gorgeous. So this was my project and um, I just thought that this was a very interesting artifact and that a lot of people should look into the musical and cultural value of 
uh, just small items, even if they don't seem significant. So thank you so much for watching.